Well, today we are celebrating what God has done. And there's three things that I have been praying that God would do in our hearts and in our lives today. Those three things are this, that God would refresh our hope. Would you say that with me? Refresh our hope. The second one is this, that God would renew our commitment. Ready? Renew our commitment. And the last one is to re-energize our reach. Can you say that with me? Re-energize our reach. That is my prayer for us as a church today, that God would accomplish that work in us. And we, we've been looking at Psalm 145 already today, but I want to continue into the 14th verse. And as we look at that, it says this. We'll put it on the screen for you. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those ben, bent beneath their loads. That tells us two things about God, that God is a helper. Amen. Does anybody know that God is a helper today? And that God is a lifter, that he lifts us when the load is too heavy for us. One of the ministries this past year that was a big part of God helping and lifting people was the ministry of North Place Maternity House. And uh, let's take a quick look at this video. A house that started out as a dream has become a home to those who need it most. North Place is a three-bed resident home, and we um, take in pregnant girls. We um, introduce them to life skills, teach them to cook, clean, homemaking skills, whatever their needs are when they come in. We try and connect them to other resources outside of our home to help them get a head start. In exchange for their free stay, the girls are expected to contribute to household chores while gaining the skills to help them be successful. For Allison Brum... The key to that journey was faith. I always knew about God in my life, um, but my addiction definitely took me to a different route. That was my main struggle, connecting to God I didn't know how to. They sat down with me at Bible study. They helped me figure out that I was missing faith. I was, you know, that's the huge connection that you need to be able to live for God and live in this world. Allison's new daughter, Haven, is the 21st baby born in the home's five-year existence. My vision for the future is honestly just to be the best mom that I can to her and to my other son, who's six. They definitely get down to the core here, and it's by love. This place is just there for any girl that, that needs somebody. This is a home. Pretty cool. Can we celebrate that church? Allison was just one of many, and we saw four new lives brought into the world through the maternity house this past year, and we got to celebrate the fifth year of its existence. And over those five years, as you see there, 25 ladies have been ministered to, and 23 babies have been brought into the world in those five years. Can we celebrate that church? What an incredible ministry that has been these five years and this past year as well. As we look back to to Psalm 145, as it continues to lead us today, in verse 15 and 16, look what it says. The eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hand, you satisfy the hunger and the thirst of every living thing. That's what our God does, and God has used the ministry of the Friendship Kitchen to do exactly that this past year to provide hope and to satisfy the needs of people, the the needs for food and drink, but also for friendship and for fellowship. God has used this ministry in a powerful way. And this past year, if you don't know, we celebrated our 18th anniversary of the Friendship Kitchen. Can we celebrate that, church? Awesome. I wanna show you a clip of an interview that we did regarding the Friendship Kitchen. Let's take a look at this. So what would you say uh, personally, what was, what was the biggest impact for you? The biggest impact was just, um, I guess it was watching Mr. and Mrs. Meredith interact with those people and seeing how touched that uh, they were bought by the help and how the Merediths treated them like um, friends, like they were family. And it didn't matter how they were dressed. It didn't matter if they had piercings and tattoos and it, didn't, it just didn't matter. They love them because they are God's children. And that just, I'm sorry, I'm getting upset. That just really touched my heart because that's the kind of person I want to be. And after leaving them and and on my way home, I just, I just thought, wow, I hope one day I can be the way they are. And I hope 
I hope that more people would go and volunteer at the kitchen. And I would love to go even more, but I can't because I'm watching my uh, daughter, of course. But yeah. it's just amazing. And they are just, they are God's, God's hands and feet, definitely. Everybody over there are God's hands and feet here on earth. So. Amen. Can we celebrate that church? Isn't that awesome? What an incredible ministry and what a great impact that that ministry has had. You know, uh, this year, I don't know if anybody's noticed, but it's been a little bit of a different kind of year. Anybody notice that? Um, just, just me, yeah. Uh, with this whole coronavirus situation and everything, the Friendship Kitchen was open and running uh, as normal for eight months prior to this COVID-19 situation. And in those eight months, as you see there, 10,862 meals were served in those eight months. That is astounding to think about just how many plates were filled up and given away with love and warmth and compassion. But here's the thing I want you to, to, to get your hands around, get your mind around this if you can. Once the, the coronavirus situation hit, it was like, okay, now what do we do with the Friendship Kitchen? Everybody gathers together real close and we need to be socially distanced. Do we, what do we do? Can we continue this in any way? And they continued the ministry by going to curbside uh, to-go meals. And we didn't know how that would go. But here's the thing, in four months since we started the curbside, we almost did as many meals as we did in the previous eight months. 10,400 meals. Incredible what God has been able to do there. And if you're asking, well, how do I get involved in that? One of the the greatest needs they have right now is for those curbside meals for bottled water and, and cans of soda because the, the, during this situation, they, everything is to go. And so if you wanna get involved in the Friendship Kitchen right now, a great way is to donate those items to the kitchen. Well, another season of ministry this past year where, where God, who, who lifts the fallen, was lifting uh, people with heavy burdens and, and helping those in need and providing hope and satisfying needs was back in this season, back in December. As we think back. Pastor Tim, welcome. What have we got here, sir? Well, Pastor Mike, you asked me to come out and celebrate Christmas at North. So I had a little bling that I thought I would come celebrate with everyone. Because the celebration of the season was that I won both the funniest and scariest sweater at the <laughs> staff sweater contest party. Yeah, so that was the celebration. That's God a big bless celebration you guys. Right there. Have a great year. No, wait, there's some more things that happened to Tim, Christmas. if people can't see that, what do you got on there? This is just, uh, just a big gorilla. This is what I want to look like in the gym. <laughs> what I'm working towards. Nothing says Christmas like Nothing a gorilla. Nothing says Christmas like a gorilla with a Santa hat on. Okay, okay. <laughs> But Mike, we did have a great Christmas season. Uh, I wanted to start off by talking about our North Pole event. For those of you who don't remember the North Pole event, way back in December, we opened this building up and we invited families from the community in. Mike, 12, did I have this right? 1,200 people showed up for the North Pole event. We blessed 1,200 people, that was amazing. But we didn't stop there. We didn't stop with just one weekend of blessing. You all are far too generous for that. We moved right from the miracles, or right from North Pole event into the miracles where we collected coats and toys and food baskets. And let me say this, 550 coats is amazing. You should celebrate that. But that number doesn't capture all the coats because after we delivered those coats, we had some schools call and they had some odd sizes. And you guys, we called on you and some of you went out and bought additional coats so that every kid that needed one got one. And so because of your faithfulness, we warmed some kids up this winter. We also, Mike, collected 2,000 toys. Unbelievable. Like we gave Santa a run for his money, 2,000 <laughs> toys. We had so many toys, we were shoving them into food baskets. And Mike, if we'd have done 30 food baskets, that would have been be astounding. Great. We did 52 food baskets through the miracles. Because of your faithfulness, God did some amazing things. Can we just celebrate all that God did during Christmas here at North? Amen. Tim, thank you for celebrating Christmas in July. Ladies and gentlemen, Pastor Tim Cinnamon, the winner of both those ugly sweater trophies. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Tim. Well, you know, as we look back at, at what God did at North Place Maternity Home and, and what he did through the Friendship Kitchen and what he did at Christmas time, those are just some of the examples, and there's so many more that we could look at. But when we look back and we see what, what God did do, 
it points us to what God can do, amen? It reminds us that, that in the moment we're in, it's still the same God that was back then doing amazing things. He's still the same God today. And he's gonna be the same God tomorrow. And as we look back, it inspires us, it encourages us, and it refreshes our hope for tomorrow. Now, I, I don't know about you, but, but in, in moments like this, in a, in a global climate where things are just different than normal, where things are a little bit heavier than normal, a little bit uncertain, and, and things that we counted on are not there anymore, and, and life is just maybe feeling a little bit heavier for you. And no matter what we face or what the odds are that we come up against, when we look back, we were reminded that, that God is still the one who helps us. Like he helped before, he's gonna help again. He's still the one that lifts us. He's the one that provided. He's the one that will provide. He doesn't change. There is hope for tomorrow, amen? Because of our God and who he is today. Maybe for you personally, it's been a dark time. Maybe it's been a hard time. And in those times, hope is easily lost. And listen, maybe it's been really hard for you, and nobody's going to make light of that. We've all been through difficult things, some more difficult than others. But here's the truth. It's not over yet, is it? God's not done. God's not done with you, and he's not done with your story. He is still writing it, and he is the God that did in the past, the God that can do right now, and the God that will do in the future. Amen? That's the God that we serve and as we look back, we see that he did and he will do. And let's let that hope, as we look back today, refresh us as we look for tomorrow. And may it lift our spirits. May it, may it grow our confidence as we look to him and trust him for what's to come tomorrow. Because no matter what we face tomorrow, he's going to be there. And he's going to be just as big as he's ever been just as powerful, and just as in control. Amen? Amen. Well, let's continue. Let's look at verse 10 in, verse, in Psalm 145. It says this, All your works will thank you, Lord, and your faithful followers will praise you. The faithful followers are those of us who are, are committed to him and live in such a way as seeking to serve and to honor and glorify and give ourselves back to the God who gave himself for us. And as we look back at what he's done today, it renews our commitment to him as we see the commitments of the past and they inspire us. And while have we seen commitments to Christ this past year in this church family, we saw a commitment to prayer in the life of this church family that began to grow this past year that has done my heart so good as I've prayed for that and looked to God to bring that about and seeing it happen has been so encouraging to me. And there's a belief in this church that prayer is important. Can I get an amen? Does anybody agree with that this morning? And here's a quote that really sums it up well from Oswald Chambers. He says this, prayer does not fit us for the greater work Prayer is the greater work. When we pray, God moves. And I don't know about you, but when I do something, something happens. But when God does something, something really happens. Amen? And that's what happens when we pray. And I want to celebrate some of the, the motion towards prayer and the commitment to prayer in our church family this, this past year. Last fall, we came together for an evening of prayer, of worship and surrender and aligning with God and praying for his kingdom to come and his will to be done as a church, praying together for the future of our church. And many of you were there that night and it was a fantastic time of, of stacking hands and worshiping and giving ourselves to God for the future. And then in this past spring, we did what we called the 24 hours of prayer where we, you see there, we put up on the wall these, these boards that had the 24-hour the day broken into 15-minute time slots, 96 of them, and 210 people signed up, and we prayed for a continuous 24 hours as a church family. That was impressive. That was so cool to see that happen and know that God was moving in and through his church for an entire 24-hour period. And then in March... We decided that, that for a week, we were going to pray together in the morning as a church for 15 minutes a day. 
And so the pastors got together and we recorded these videos and we posted them every day so that we could pray together as a church. And, and lo and behold, right when that happened, the coronavirus began shutting things down. And we said, you know what, we should probably do this one more week. And then we said, we should probably do it one more week. Well, let's do it again this next week. And here we are 19 weeks later and 95 videos later, having over 50 people a day committing themselves to praying for the first 15 minutes a day. That's pretty cool, church, amen? We're seeing a movement of people gravitating towards the heart of God and interacting with God in a personal, real way every single day. And my prayer is that that will continue to grow, amen? Another instance of prayer that I just have to share with you is this is beautiful. Uh, in our youngest kids area, the, the jungle, there was a jar that was put out this year to collect prayer requests from, from children and from families, and then they would be prayed over. Well, uh, there was a lot of faithful contributors to this throughout the year, and then when the coronavirus hit, a young girl, nine years old, was looking to put more cards into that, but she was you know, informed no one's there. To, to get them out and, and to read over them and pray over them. She said, okay. And then she asked for a notebook. Okay, so she was given a notebook. And what she does now is when she talks to people or, or, or calls them on the phone, she will ask them what to pray for. And this nine-year-old would then write down in her notebook the different prayer requests. And every night before bed, she is praying over those because no one's here to pray over the jar. Is that beautiful, church? How inspiring is it when a nine-year-old says, I get it, and I know the power of God, and I'm going to pray? I don't know about you, but that makes me go, man, I want to pray a little bit more than I did yesterday. I'm inspired as I look back at what God's doing in her life, and I want to see it happen in my life. Amen? That's what happens when we look back. As we look back, God inspires us, and he renews our commitment to the future. And we saw a commitment to prayer this past year, and we saw also a commitment to share. So many of our, our ministries, especially for kids and students, there, there's a real need for uh, financial support and scholarships in order to participate. And so what we saw this past year was that from you all, from this church family, there were scholarships to help students be part of Awana and Upward and student ministry camps and North Christian School. And I just want to say thank you. Church, will you say thank you to those around you that helped to scholarship kids so they could participate in these ministries this year? The commitment to sharing continued as we did this shoe challenge towards the end of a message series last fall. And if you remember, the challenge was to count how many shoes you had in your closets. Remember this, this horrible event that you had to do? Uh, and you went through, and some of you just gave up. You just said, I can't count that high. Uh, and, and the challenge was to bring in a dollar for every pair of shoes. And you see on the screen there how many dollars we raised, $5,825 to provide shoes and so many feet that were in need of shoes got shoes this past fall. Can we celebrate that? Thank you, church family, for letting God use you in that way. And while we're talking about shoes, let me share with you a story that uh, was given to me. A lady came to pick up meals at the Friendship Kitchen curbside, and it was in the high 80s that day. The lady had walked a long way without shoes. She showed us her feet, and they were very dirty and really red from the heat on the sidewalk and roads. And we asked if we could give her a pair of shoes if we had her size. She told us the size we needed, and we did not have the right size. But then someone, right then, only God, shows up with a car full of items to donate to the Friendship Kitchen. And when asked if she had any shoes, she said yes, and you know how this ends. They happened, happened to be the right size. And there was a pair, I, this is my favorite part right here, there was a pair of gold sequin tennis shoes that had never been worn. She put them on and they fit her perfectly. It makes me think of Cinderella. And she smiled from ear to ear. God has a way of working all things out for the good. Amen, church. And what I want to just draw our attention to is we celebrate that what God has done, what we see is that God doesn't just do, God orchestrates things that we could never orchestrate. God puts people in the right place at the right time for the right moment, for the right thing to happen, that we stand back and go, wow, how did you do that, God? And he goes, I'm God, what do you expect? 
It's what I do. That's what I do. And, and, and the beauty of all of that is, is that when God's people, when you and I say, you know what? I want to be used. Put me in, coach. How do you want to use me? And he puts something in the back of your mind, and you decide, instead of doing what feels comfortable, I'm going to do what God calls me to do, and you step forward. Watch what God has already orchestrated and how God uses that to change people's lives. God wants to use his people to change people's lives. Amen? And I don't know about you, but when I hear that, it renews my commitment. And, and it makes me say, God, I want to be a part of what you're doing. I don't want to watch. I don't just want to hear stories. I want to be part of this story. I want you to use my life. While I've still got moments and breath on this planet, I want my life to be used for something like that. Can I get an amen from the church today? Is that not who you want to be? Is that not what this does to us? It, it, it renews our commitment to being the people of God, to be used by God for the sake of God when we hear what God has done. Amen? And I want to share a few more commitments with you that, that this past year, in, in our one opportunity to do it before the coronavirus, we had seven children that, that their parents dedicated them to the Lord this past year. We had 23 people express their salvation, their commitment to Jesus through baptism. Amen? And we had 26 people pursue the commitment of membership. We had people taking steps and, and moving towards Jesus in their life and in their lifestyle and in their, their future for him. And I want to just celebrate that with you today. And another commitment that we celebrate today is the, the celebration of, of weekly giving, that commitment that people have made. God's plan for our finances is very simple, that we would bring the first 10% of our income to him. And, and that is a dual purpose. The first purpose is to change our hearts so that we see that it's, none of it's ours, that everything comes from him. And that as we honor him with that, it puts him in the first place, not our stuff or our control. It's an act of worship that when we are committed to it and we participate in giving our tithes and our offerings, that God uses his people to change people's lives through the ministry of his church. And this past year, we did what we call the tithe challenge. And we encouraged people in our church family to take that step of faith, that, that step that says, I'm going to, to give back to God a portion of what he's given to me. Really, am I gonna do that? And over, listen, over 50 people took that challenge and increased their faithfulness to God by worshiping him through giving. Can we celebrate that, church, that we saw hearts move in that direction this year? That's awesome. And so uh, what we saw in verse 10 was that, that we are to thank him and express our faithfulness to God. And, and I want to pause in this moment to do just that through our weekly giving. And there's a few ways that we can do that uh, today. One is we can mail in our tithes and our offerings to the church office, and many of you are doing that. And if you brought your tithe, your offering with you in the room today, there's a gray box back here by these doors we'll exit by, and you can put that in there today. Or you can go online, uh, as you see there on your screen, northpbc.org slash give, or go to our church app and click the tab that says give there. But as we look to give today, as we look to continue to be faithful in worshiping God that way, I just want to pray together as a church family because of the purposes behind what this does, and we want to commit what we give to the Lord and to his purpose. So would you join me, church? Let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you are at work in the world around us and that you're not only working around us, but you're working within us. And one of the ways that you work in us is through this, this commitment and through this act of giving, this worship, Lord, as we come to you. Lord, we pray that you would get a hold of our hearts in a fresh way today as we seek to be faithful to you, as we seek to be committed to you. And Lord, not only would you do that in us, but would you work through what we give in a way that we can't even begin to understand or comprehend that lives would be radically changed now and forever because of the ministry that you, that you do through what we give so, Lord, thank you for the blessing of being able to worship you this way and to participate in what you're doing in the world in this way right now. So we turn all of this, Lord, as we give today over to you for your sake and your glory. And it's in your name that we trust and pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Well, let's take a look at the final verse of this psalm, Psalm 145. In verse 21, it says this, I will praise the Lord, and I love this, and may, everybody say this with me, you ready? Everyone on earth, bless his holy name forever and ever. Everyone on earth. 
What we see here is that that as David's writing the psalm of praise, his desire is for more and more and more and more and more people to know the goodness of God, the love of God, and the salvation of God. His heart is for the world to come to know Jesus, that they would experience the one true God, that they would experience that, that reality of God in their lives, that there would be overflow of joy and glory expressed to him through this worship that David talks about here, that his name would be praised forever and ever. And this year, God has used this church family to reach further and further into the world around us. And our prayer is that it would continue to grow and our reach would expand this year. But I wanna look back and celebrate some of the reach this year and how God used this church family to reach into the lives of the next generation first. And God used so many different things to do that. But in our kid ministry, reaching to the next generation, the first celebration that I wanna have with you today is this, that we were able to bring onto our team that God brought to us an incredible young lady named Erin Perez to lead our kids' ministry. Can we celebrate that church? She is doing a phenomenal job, and we are so blessed to have her on our team. And so excited that she is leading this ministry. And, and, and here's the thing. We, we brought Aaron into the team to lead this ministry in February where things were, remember, kind of more normal. And here she is. And let's get going up to speed. And then coronavirus. And by the way, the whole ministry that you have in, in mind, yeah, we're not doing that. So what are you going to do? And she went to work and she, she started building and putting together an online ministry for kids. And that was incredible what, what began to, to happen online in that time. And then it came time for VBS, this huge program with the building full of people, not socially distant and all kinds of great. And the question became, what do we do? What are we gonna do? And so many, 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 and if you ask Aaron, I'm probably not putting enough minis in there, many hours of what are we gonna do, thinking through ideas, how this could work, what this, finally they landed on an idea, and let's take a look at what happened this past week in VBS. We celebrate that, an incredibly creative at-home online ministry, this whole VBS that just went so well this past week. As you see there, 62 different kids, third um, age, pre-K three to fifth grade, comprising of 37 different families. And, and then I heard about how those kids invited neighbors to come over to their house and participate with VBS. So we really don't know how many ended up being part of VBS. And 17 volunteers doing all kinds of great things in two different mission projects. And by the way, since today it feels like the theme is shoes, uh, one of the projects is shoes, soles for Souls for Souls, and uh, there's donation things out in the, the prayer garden. You can participate in that. Uh, you can contact the church office or, or Aaron and get in touch with being part of that. Hundreds and hundreds of shoes to go and help people that need them. So you can participate in that as well. But it's just an incredible investment of creativity and energy to make VBS happen this year. And it was beautiful. It was wonderful. And so many people had such a great experience with that. But our kid ministry was not the only ministry to reach into the next generation this past year. Our student ministry did so as well. And Pastor Adam has, is doing a phenomenal job leading our, our students and the student ministry week after week um, it's, it was a great year, and then we hit 
the same uh, obstacle of coronavirus, and he too then began developing an online ministry with his team and began reaching through uh, a whole different venue to reach into the students' lives and make an impact and make a difference. And there is so much tenacity. Let me just get you guys to, to realize the amount of tenacity and effort, and I won't quit, and I'm going to see this thing move forward and touch and reach kids' lives, is the heartbeat of our kids director, Aaron, and our student pastor, Adam. And can we just celebrate that right there, church? So grateful, so grateful for them and their ministry. And this past year, one of the big events every year is going to Buffalo, New York for snow camp. And this, this past year, 70 students went up to, to snow camp uh, and, and had a great experience. And there was one student in particular uh, whose name is Colton, that I want to just share briefly his, his story, that, that he was invited by his girlfriend to come to the, the youth ministry to, to participate in it. And he said, oh, you know, okay, I'll, I'll go to church with you. And he came, and he, he had a great experience just with everybody loving him and accepting him and all of this. And he started listening, and in his words, I started paying attention to what they were talking about. And I began to understand what, what God had done and, and who God is and, and what I need. And then he was invited to go to snow camp, and he decided that he would, and he was one of the 70 students that went. And while he was at snow camp, he came to understand his need for a savior and he gave his life to Christ. And, and Colton got saved this past winter at snow camp. And let's celebrate that church. And he got home and then Colton was baptized as Jesus commanded us to be. And Colton's life was radically changed, not in a small way, but in a major way, an eternal way. Colton's future for all eternity has been changed because of the ministry of our student ministry this past year. Amen? Amen. That is what we're celebrating, reaching into this next generation. We're also reaching into our adult generation uh, through our Connect ministry. And this past year, we had 26 different Connect groups meeting with an average of 189 people every single week participating in that, growing as disciples. But as is the reoccurring theme in all of our lives, the coronavirus shifted things and changed things, and most of those groups have used an online type of opportunity to continue to stay connected to each other. And our Sunday morning services this past year, again, same theme, we come to the middle of, of March and we're no longer meeting together in person. And for the first time in the history of our church, we said, we might need to take this online. How in the world do you do that? And I wanna let you guys know that that decision to put something online was made, I think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go here, Josh, and ask you directly, was it like a Thursday that we made that decision? Yes, it was. And by Sunday, we had put together a, a, a service to put online on Sunday. And I don't know if you know much about technological stuff like that, but that is miraculous turnaround time. Can we say thank you to everybody that helps out with all of that stuff behind the scenes? It's just unbelievable and phenomenal that they were able to do that. And, and the real thing was, what are we gonna do to do that? Like, what's our equipment? What do we have? Well, I've got a camera at my house and I've got some duct tape and I've got a Band-Aid. Great, let's slap it together and see what we can do. And so they, they quickly put together with creativity and energy and piecing things together and they formed an online service for us that so many of us in this past three, four months have been able to participate with and online today, you are able to do that because of this team putting that together. And what we didn't expect, we didn't expect the reach of our online ministry. Our, our hope was that most of our church family could stay connected and we could continue to worship together even though we couldn't be face to face. We, we, were, we were excited about that opportunity and we moved towards that opportunity, but we never expected what would really happen. That our church family did have the opportunity to stay connected and worship together, but there were people that had never connected with this church family that began connecting regularly. And we saw the reach of our online ministry through our services and through our social media and everything begin to grow exponentially. And we discovered that our reach every month was not in the hundreds of people that we connected with. It wasn't in the thousands. It was in the tens of thousands of people that we are connecting with by doing online ministry. 
I don't know if you realize just the expansiveness and, and the opportunity for the gospel to go forward through our online presence. And so we decided that no matter what happens with the coronavirus, that the online presence is going to remain and only get more bolstered, more fortified, and more strengthened to increase our reach and share the gospel and change more lives, amen? And that's what we're gonna continue to do. It's only going to get stronger and more impact. And so here's the thing, as we look back and celebrate what God has done, it re-energizes our reach. It renews our hope and our commitment and it refreshes all of that, but then it re-energizes us and says, you know what? I am filled with hope. I do have a stronger commitment. I wanna get back in there and, and let's do it. Let's reach out. Let's expand our impact. We saw God do a lot of reaching through this family this, this past year, but here's, here's the thing. There's more to be reached, amen? And there's a greater reach that we need to have as a church family. And the beautiful thing is, it's not the church. It's not those people. It's us. It's every single one of us. God has a role for each one of us to play. God has a part for you to play in reaching the world so that everyone can come to know our Lord and our Savior and be changed. And so this year, we're gonna reach together, church. And we're gonna grow our impact as a church. We're gonna move towards unleashing the full kingdom potential of this church family as we move forward this year. I, I can't tell you the, the sense of, of God's moving uh, in the life of our church and not being defeated by a coronavirus. We all are aware of that, right? That, that the coronavirus hasn't defeated God, right? We're all aware that God is bigger than the coronavirus. <laughs> And that God is going to use this for greater things than we can imagine, but he is calling his people to step in and say, here I am, put me in, coach, I'm ready to play. I wanna be a part of what you're doing this next year. And, and church, that next year starts right now. This is the moment that we say, wow, that was great, God, but let's go, because we wanna see more happen next year, and I want you to use me. I want you to use me, not because I'm super special or super talented or super gifted or super capable. I just want you to use me because you made me and you have put your spirit in me when I came to Christ and allowed you to, to, to take over my life and I gave myself to you. You did something powerful in me and I just want to give myself back to you. So whatever you want to do with this, you got it. And that's the posture of a church that God can use. And as we move towards that today, know this, that there are people in our church family that we need to start with that have disconnected. There are people that don't feel comfortable coming to an in-person service, and I fully understand that, and I'm so glad that you can stay home today and, and connect with us. But there are people that, that aren't here in person, that aren't connecting online. There are people that just have disconnected from the church, and you know who they are. You sat by them before, you've had conversation with them before, you know them, and here's what I wanna encourage you to do, church, is I wanna invite you and challenge you today to reach out to someone and say, very simply, I miss you. How have you been? How can I pray for you? And, and, and I'm not gonna challenge you today to find 10 people or to find five or even three. Who's the one? Who's the one person that God would put on your heart even right now to say, you know what? I need to text them and just see how they're doing. I just need to text them and ask them how I can pray. And when they respond and I say, I will pray for you, you know what's really my favorite is when you, when you get that text and you just go ahead and pray for them. And then you respond back, I am praying for you because I already did and I'm gonna continue. That we as a church would say, if tomorrow starts today, the future starts now, then who am I gonna reach out to today, before the sun sets today? Who do I need to reach out to and say, you matter? And then ask them, have you been connecting with our church family online? And if the answer comes back, no, invite them to do so. Invite them back into the connectivity of their church family in this season because you know that that's what, what, what you need, it's what I need, and it's, it's what they need. So I wanna challenge you with that today, church, as we begin to move forward. God is going to do great things through you this coming year. 
and today is when it begins. Our God has been at work this past year. Would you all agree with that? God has been moving and God is at work, and we can celebrate that. And God is not done, amen, church? He is gonna keep moving. He has much he wants to do. Today, our hope is refreshed because we've looked at what God has done, just some of it, and we know that God will do in the future. Church, do you believe that God can do amazing things this year? If so, let me hear you. Do you believe that God can do amazing things this year? Amen. And today, we renew our commitment as a church family ready to give ourselves to the, 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 the cause of Christ again. If you're ready to give yourself to the cause of Christ in this new year, can I hear you? Can I hear you celebrate? Can we put a couple emojis up there, some smiley faces, some thumbs up, some just amen, I'm in? And, and lastly, we renew our commitment and we re-energize our reach today, church. We look forward today and we say, you know, there are people that need to know Jesus and I'm in. I wanna see our world reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I wanna see more lives changed. I wanna see the increase of our reach grow this next year and I want God to use me to do that. Anybody up for that this year? Can I hear you today? Let's see God use us and expand our reach today, whether it's in person or digital or online, whatever, that God would increase his reach this year. And maybe today... Maybe say you hear all these celebrations and you hear us talking about a great and glorious and mighty and powerful God, but the reality is this. Maybe you don't know him personally today and his heart and his desire is 100% that you would know him personally today. That's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, that, that he would die on the cross to pay for your sin so that you could be forgiven and you could enter into a personal relationship with him now and for all of eternity. And today his invitation is this, to come to him, to admit your sin and admit your need for a savior to rescue you and to put your trust in Jesus. And when you do that, he will rescue you. He will save you. He will forgive you. He will renew you from the inside out and remake you. So if that's you today, I wanna give you an opportunity right now for the greatest celebration we could celebrate today, you giving your life to Jesus Christ and being saved. So would you join me? Let's, let's, all, let's all go to prayer. And, and as we do, as we bow our heads right now, if you know without a shadow of a doubt that you have been saved, you've given your life to Jesus, would you pray right now for those that have yet to put their faith in Christ that this moment would be that moment for them? And if that's you and you're saying, I know I need a savior and I'm ready to turn my life over to him and turn from my sin and turn to Jesus and trust him to save me. If that's you, then I'm gonna invite you to pray this prayer in the quietness of your heart with me to express your heart to God and receive his salvation. If that's you, would you join me in this prayer? Dear Jesus, thank you for your gift of salvation. I know I have sinned and don't deserve it but you loved me and died for me and rose from the dead to save me. I trust in you alone for eternal life. I choose now to turn from my sin and I turn my life over to you now. Thank you for saving me today. It's in your name, Jesus my Lord and Savior that I pray. And all God's people said, amen. And can we celebrate that today, church? Those of you that gave your lives to Christ today, we are celebrating with you, along with all of heaven that is just cheering about your decision today. And there's a smile on God's face as he has welcomed you into his family today.